Hi, I'm Ryan Levick. I'm a cloud developer advocate at Microsoft, and joining me here is Ashley Williams, who works on Rust and WebAssembly at Cloudflare. And uh, I have a few questions for you, Ashley. Um, the first one is uh, about the edge. You talked about the edge in your talk, and I'm wondering if you could define what the edge is for us. Yeah, absolutely. So the first thing I'll say is that the edge is a terrible name. Uh, it's really difficult, and most people's mental models don't include it in any shape or form. And so the best way I, well, what I did in my talk is I talked about pizza and where pizza gets baked and sending it around the world, and so that's not going to work in voice. But fundamentally, you can understand that there are sets of data centers all over the world and those data centers have disk space on them, and we often use that to cache static assets. And when we talk about the edge at Cloudflare, and usually when people talk about like edge serverless, maybe Lambda at edge, we're talking about taking the disks that would otherwise be storing those static assets and running compute on them instead. So instead of you know storing a bunch of cat GIFs from the internet, uh, it's going to be storing an application that can resize those cat GIFs for any device. <laughs> And uh, this technology takes advantage of WebAssembly, which is something you work on quite a bit yourself. Can you tell me a bit about um, why you're so excited about WebAssembly and the future of WebAssembly? Sure. So the first thing I can talk about is how at least the Cloudflare Edge supports WebAssembly. So the Cloudflare Edge, instead of running a classic VM or container architecture, is using a runtime based on V8. So you can kind of think of it as the browser in the cloud, which is definitely confusing if you haven't thought about it before. Um, so because we're using V8, we get WebAssembly out of the bat. Uh, and so I'm particularly excited about WebAssembly because there's a ton of different types of applications that have kind of been excluded from the web because the web wasn't able to do the computation necessary uh, to make that application run the way it wanted to. An example is like, when Google Proof of Concept WebAssembly, they put AutoCAD in the browser. Um, and so those applications are going to be on the web, which means they're more likely to be open. Most people, when they're putting stuff on the web, it's open, and that's really, really cool. Um, additionally, JavaScript was the only choice for many web developers uh, if they wanted to be in the browser. And it turns out that being an unwilling monopoly is just like a bad product position. And so for the web, I think it's going to be awesome that folks who don't want to write in JavaScript could potentially write in something different. And that also means that the folks that want to write JavaScript, when they go to develop JavaScript the language, are not necessarily dealing with a kind of large, unhappy population of folks who need to, you know, have their opinions heard, but they, they don't love JavaScript. They'd really rather another option. And so when the other options happen, I think you can fundamentally develop better languages for those audiences. Uh, and so the reason I'm particularly excited about WebAssembly being able to run on Cloudflare workers is that while WebAssembly is meant to be a very small binary that runs very quickly, like when we talk about small, what do we mean by small, right? And small on the web can mean a lot of things. And so by putting like a browser on the edge, like you can still use WebAssembly. It will run super fast, really fast cold starts, uh, but you don't have to download all of the WebAssembly. And so the size of it doesn't exactly matter that much. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, I just think we're going to see a lot new, more applications on the web, new people who weren't writing on the web coming to the web, and just a lot of things performing a lot better. Great. And um, one programming language that takes advantage of WebAssembly is the Rust programming language, uh, which both of us here <laughs> enjoy very much. Um, can you tell our audience here um, why Rust is such a great choice for WebAssembly development? Sure, absolutely. Um, so I think the first thing I'll say is, right, <laughs> you can compile any language to WebAssembly. The question is, should you? Um, and so when you're asking about should you, you have to realize that WebAssembly doesn't have its own runtime. Uh, so if your language has a runtime, it has to bring it with it. And so Rust has an incredibly small runtime, whereas like something like Go or JavaScript has a very large one. And so when you're writing WebAssembly and you want it to be small and fast, you know, you don't want to be bundling those runtimes into your WebAssembly binary. Um, but additionally, uh, so right now when you look at that like criteria of like eliminating a runtime, you kind of have C, C++, and Rust. And so, again, not a competition. These are all lovely. I'm sure people who write them have a really good time. 
But one of the things I really enjoy about Rust is Rust's goal is to empower people to participate in these more kind of systems or lower level languages that have like higher, uh, you know, memory management or ability to tweak the things down below. Uh, and in doing so, it's really built out a ton of just, just fantastic developer tools. So Rust has got this great compiler, does all this stack analysis, kind of like a pair programming buddy. Um, but then we also have a package manager, we've got linters, and then the Rust WebAssembly team has worked on building out a ton of tooling. So Wesm Bindgen, and yes, I wrote, I wrote a, a kind of an integrated build and publish tool called Wasm Pack. And so when you hear something like WebAssembly and Rust, like those seem like very technical and like can be very kind of scary to other folks who've never done it before. And so I think the real focus on ergonomics and developer experience makes Rust like a really great choice. All right, thank you very much. It's been uh, a pleasure talking with you today. Yeah, thank you.